So I'm going to be continuing today with The Temptations of a Born Leader by Carolyn Elliott. Yesterday I did the first part, the first four, and I'm going to continue with number five. The temptation to stay small, to from feeling our depth, our electricity, and wildness, which keeps others from having to confront the lies that they use to shrink themselves. We perpetually shrink the sensations, the sensational impact we have on others out of inappropriate politeness. We don't need to protect everyone from our power and our truth. And we offend people. It used to mean, you know, risking exile and death. But now we really do have to confront the fear of being disliked, unpalatable, too intense, and weighing it against our freedom and impact on the world. Number six, um, and it starts part three, the, uh, this is the temptation to go it alone, cherishing our independence and embodying almost like a feline solitude of spirit like a cat. Um, and this is too much or too little can kill, both kills creativity. And it's efficient to find successful people humbly and get their insights, even if we have to jump through some hoops and trust issues to put ourselves out there and kill our ego and fear. And finally, number seven, um, the temptation to get hung up on worldly success. First of all, we have to recognize we'll never stop aiming at goals as long as we live. Um, in Judaism, we say you have 100, you want 200 eventually. Yes, you'll be happy with your goal and you'll be thankful, but then eventually your natural desires will come because a goal, you know, is a sterilized masculine word for desire, which is the pulsing life force of the universe and everything in it. We're going to keep being alive. We're going to keep pushing forward. The problem is when we deny the terrifying totality of our goals, for example, tasting the sweet bliss of enlightenment every step of the way is possible, and liberating ever greater depths of our soul's creative capacity to express its unique wisdom in the world. When we're discouraged, we're not fixated enough on everything else we want in addition to the one goal we're getting discouraged around. This is the challenge, to not constrict our desire to a fraction of the single arbitrary outcome. In other words, open-ended desire. I truly want, however it happens, I truly want it more than anything else. The desire do, doesn't do well with the kind of containment of shrinking our desire, which is a divinely charged, infinitely vivifying eros, to the size of one external husk, which is like tunnel vision or, you know, we can't settle for signposts because our birthright of bliss goes far beyond any restrictive shapes. We have to want so badly, but not allow it to be constricted to only one outcome. And I will stop here. Um, it's a lot of information to take in and I don't want to confound it or confuse it with um, other topics. So uh, have a blessed day. Bye.